I started digital painting about eight or so years ago now, and I pretty much threw myself into it straight away. Uh, I didn't have a clue what I was doing most of the time, and I had to explore my own way of painting the way I wanted to. And I did, mostly failing, but also enjoying the process of learning something new. There were things that I definitely wish I would have known before I started though, so I thought I'd make this really short video covering some of those things. My digital painting setup right now is incredibly basic and I'm using a really small, really cheap and a really old Wacom bamboo tablet that I picked up a few years ago because I accidentally broke my Intuos 4 pen. I think it was an Intuos 4. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how I did it, um, but, but yeah, I had some freelance client work to do and I really had to get it done, so um, I ended up having to run to the closest shop nearby that I knew sold tablets here in the UK and um, I've now been using that for the last four years or so um, and it's been great, uh, yeah. Now this is just from my own experience, but I do generally feel that um, a beginner would really work well with one of these very small uh, and cheap tablets to kind of get started, um, because everything that I create now on this channel, regardless of whether you think it's good or not, is all created with this uh, with this fifty pound. A cheap tablet and it works perfectly fine. It's got pressure sensitivity, the pressure sensitivity works well on it, uh, it's, I have never had any problems installing it on anything, um, it's, it just works um, and for like a pickup and just have a play around item I, I'd really recommend it. Now don't get me wrong, certain tablets do suit certain people, um, but I think the main thing to remember is that better tablets do not necessarily make you a better artist. Um, and I think that's the main point with this section. I know that a lot of people prefer to have tablets like the Cintiqs, where you can draw directly onto the surface much more in a traditional way. And that's great if you feel like you need more space for your brush strokes or you feel like smaller tablets can make you feel quite cramped um, then yeah by all means try and experiment with one of these surface kind of tablets but what i would say is that if you are starting out definitely try something cheap and reliable first check the reviews for it but don't try to buy something that's too expensive because you just don't need it at such a beginner stage and the one I use right now which is essentially one I could have bought when I very first started is perfect really. There's literally one question that gets asked all the time when you look online and you search stuff about digital art. It's what kind of brushes do you use? Let me say right off the bat Photoshop's brush technology and the customization that it brings is amazing. Custom brushes are amazing and if you see someone using a certain brush set that you'd love to use then that's great, why not ask them if you could possibly try it too. That's cool. I'm not bashing people who ask people what brush set they use, blah 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 blah, because I do it too and I'm sure at one time or another someone has also done it as well. It's cool. But I think the thing to think about is that brushes don't necessarily make the artist. Sure, some artists use brushes and you might think that that's the only reason why that their painting looks a certain way. But that's just not necessarily always true. If I was to go back and talk to my younger self, um, I would tell him to stop relying on using brushes as much as I was. For example, things like stamp brushes, brushes that literally just stamp a picture of something onto the canvas. Um, they're, they're great, 
and I'm sure they're useful sometimes and I'm sure I still use brushes like these from time to time, that's cool. But why not draw that thing instead? Or why not make your own brush of that thing instead? Uh, adding your own personal touch to a painting will always make it look better and people will be drawn to it because you will have started to create your own art style in the process and not a style of someone else's. I found that my own personal development was sometimes hindered by this absolute freedom that you have with Photoshop. It's pretty overwhelming when you see just what people manage to create with Photoshop and with this technology and that's really cool but at the same time it can become a crutch that stops you from focusing on what you really need to be doing to make good paintings and that's the fundamentals. Overall I say to use custom brushes sparingly try to define a set of brushes down from sets that you really love and stick to just using like a few of them at a time. Try to focus on actually painting using one overall brush before trying to layer down tons of texture and stamp brushes and just trying to layer down all these different custom brushes to try to emulate something. Try not to do that, just try to focus on using one or two or three brushes before you start trying these other ones and experimenting with them. Maybe try and, well yeah, experiment making your own brush sets. A picture always looks better when there's an element of yourself in it. There seems to be this belief among a lot of beginner artists that using reference is cheating, which is uh, pretty much um, wrong. Without studying, looking and like exploring reference, whether that be from life or from photos, how are you meant to know what something looks like? How are you meant to understand how uh, light bounces, how that cupboard over there actually sits in perspective, or what colours you actually see when the sun is setting, you know, for example. I think the misconception of what people deem as cheating, as opposed to learning, comes from this ridiculous idea that you should look at something once and immediately have all the information in your head of how to record it. This is obviously silly. The use of reference is a vital part in learning art, and without applying the appropriate reference to your paintings, you won't make art that looks... right? for lack of a better word, or at least the art you make won't reference the real world you're trying to allude to. When it comes to what reference you should use, it all depends on what you're looking for. I can't afford to go to a mountain range every day, so Google will have to suffice. With people and characters though, life drawing will always be more helpful than using static photos, so if you can, try to take yourself along to life drawing classes as much as possible if you really want to improve your anatomy skills. Don't be afraid of using reference and don't feel like you've failed because you don't immediately know what something looks like after only looking at it for 5 seconds. Everyone uses reference. And that's a few tips that I hope might have been a bit helpful and if you like this please do subscribe for more. I'll see you later.